Good morning, everyone. Let us, good morning. We're going to begin right now. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation be with all of you. Today we greet the body of our sister Marian, and we surround her with the church's prayer. We commend our sister to the mercy of God, and we pray that the promise made to her in baptism will be fulfilled. And sprinkle the casket. On the day of her baptism, Marian was welcomed into the church. She was given new life in Christ, and she was clothed with the garment of salvation. Let us, let us begin. Give us abundant life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring comfort to those who mourn. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you give hope to all who believe in you. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Now we bring forward Krista, who will share with us words of Remember, please be seated. Good morning. 
I call her grandma. So did most of my friends. To all of you, she was mom, Aunt Marion, Mrs. Cochran, great grandma, or simply Marion. To all of us, she was open, generous, funny, warm. She was one of a kind. And if she could hear me now, she would stop me and say, who is she? The cat's mother? It was one of her classic expressions. I've been asking myself this week, what really made Marion so special? It wasn't that she lived the high life. She didn't live extravagantly. She enjoyed lovely things. She was pretty down to earth. She enjoyed a bowl of salty chips or a plate of Ritz crackers and cheese at happy hour. She preferred beer over wine, old Milwaukee or Carling, light, mind you. Although later she didn't mind a glass of white wine, especially if you would join her for a drink too. And even though she didn't like tea, she always had some in the cupboard so she could offer you some when you went to visit. It wasn't that she was really outrageous. She carried herself with dignity, and being proper was very important to her. I could tell from the way she spoke about being a kid that she was proud, that she was the daughter of a doctor. At the same time, she really did have a few standout legendary moments. Our favorite story, who has been told many times, is when I was about four or five, my parents and Dory and I were visiting her and Grandpa, Foxy, in Florida. We were late getting to the airport, to catch our flight home, and by the time we got through security, our plane was taxiing down the runway. We could see it through the window. She ran past security, out onto the tarmac, waving her arms, yelling, stop the plane, stop the plane. And it stopped. And we got on, and we went home. Can you imagine doing that now? It would be national news. She would be in jail. But what's more remarkable is that she didn't make a big deal about doing things like that. She wasn't trying to be a legend. She just did them and then moved on. There are more stories like that, but those aren't the only ones that made Grandma wonderful. What's remarkable is that Grandma knew some of the most important things in life. She knew how important it is to be part of a community. When I was a kid, Grandma's place felt like the central gathering point for everyone in the universe. The house on Arendelle down the street from ours when we were kids was where Dory and I would go to before and after school, home for lunch, when mom and dad were working. It was the place to go for all the cousins, aunts, and uncles on Christmas night, after all the presents had been opened and the turkey had been eaten, for a drink, a visit, to hear some music when the guitars came out. The apartment behind Carlingwood, where she lived for many years before she moved to Unitarian House last year. That was the place to drop in for a coffee, a chat, or a nap if you'd been out late the night before. You didn't have to stay long or do much, though sometimes she had a job for you and needed help with something just drop in and say hi. At one point, half the family seemed to live in those apartment buildings. Dorothy and Emmett, Betty and Bill, plus Grandpa's sisters, the other Aunt Marion, Alva and Audrey, she lived just a few blocks away. There was always someone dropping in, dropping something off, picking something up, something going on. Grandma also knew that while home is where the heart is, the world was an interesting place. She read the news every day. She kept up with everything. She enjoyed traveling and going places, more so in her younger years. She visited Europe a number of times. Her trip to Ireland for Tom and Brenda's wedding was a true highlight for her. And of course, there was Florida, where she and Grandpa were snowbirds and drove down every winter. She and Aunt Betty flew out to visit me in Vancouver when I lived there. We drove to Victoria and had high tea at the Empress Hotel. We drank out of fancy teacups and stuck our pinkies out, and we laughed and laughed, even though she didn't like tea. But because it was such a great experience to be in this beautiful place on the West Coast, have high tea like the Queen with her sister and her granddaughter. Grandma knew that of all the places in the world, one was the most special of all, the cottage. Maybe it was the natural beauty of the river or the spectacular sunsets. But it wasn't because it was glamorous with all the bugs in the outhouse, but it was the best place of all, another community. In the early days, it was a tight-knit, bollocking group of Marion and Nazi's closest friends. I tend to think of that as the golden age of the cottage. As a kid, I spent a lot of time there, like, like many of you. Sometimes on a Friday, Grandma and Grandpa would pick Dory and I up early from school at lunch, and we'd drive up to the cottage with them for the weekend. We'd stop at the Buns Master on the way to pick up those giant chocolate chip cookies and hamburger buns. We'd beg them to take the ferry, but they usually preferred the Quebec side. If we were lucky, we'd stop at Louis or Carmichael's for more treats before we pulled onto the cottage road. And then we'd take our seatbelts off to get a better view. We'd watch for Joe's truck and the deer dying to get into our bathing suits and go for a swim. And then, of course, Grandma and Grandpa would move up there for the summer, and we'd do it over and over again. The happy hours were legendary, and so were the horseshoe tournaments. 
There seemed to be a new project every year. Grandma loved a good project. One year was macrame. Another year they made those dolls out of raffia. There were dill pickles, refurbishing furniture. They turned old windows into mirrors. There was the knitting. Those were the sweaters she'd made with Aunt Betty, and the matching hats. The cottage was a quiet, fairly isolated place, yet there was something exciting going on all the time. Like one of those family reunions, one of those crazy storms, or a good game of cards. For Grandma, playing cards was an essential life skill, like taking swimming lessons, though she never went in the water herself. And she didn't just play cards at the cottage, but it was a bridge club, or canasta, or hearts, or Friday night euchre with Danny and Blondine and Betty, or a game of cribbage with Adam and Jamie and Matt, or Kings in the Corner with Annie and Greg. She played with relish, with real pleasure, and she played to win. And she did win, a lot. But she was also genuinely happy for you when you won, when you had a good hand. She cheered you on even when she lost. Because it doesn't, wasn't about the winning or how good she was at it. She was good. She just liked playing with you. Whether it was at the cottage or in the city, Grandma knew how to make you feel welcome. She could always cram everyone in, make the food go farther, make space for everyone. Everyone had an open invitation to visit her at the cottage at any time, and she meant it. She was really happy when people showed up, maybe a bit offended if you didn't. There was always room for one more. Because she knew that the secret of the cottage wasn't how big it was or how fancy, but that it brought us all together. Now, of course, no one is perfect. I don't know if she realized it, but she could be a bit short at times, especially on the phone, which sometimes is more of an interrogation than a conversation. She could fire off questions like she was at a shooting range, but might not wait to hear the answer before she fired up another round. Hi, dear. How are you? Fine. What's new? How are the children? How's Olaf? How's work? Okay, call me later. Okay, bye. The whole call might, might last 90 seconds. She could also have selective hearing from time to time, and it wasn't because there was something wrong with her hearing aid. As far as being as outgoing and as fun as she was, she was also sometimes quite nervous about a lot of things. Grandma didn't make a big deal of it, but she knew loss in her life. Her mother died when she was very young. Grandma must have been just six or seven. She lost Nazi, her husband, when he was in his 60s. Way too early. These were formative events that shaped her life. Never mind these last two years of the pandemic, which have been so hard for us, all of us. She didn't talk much about everything, at least from what I could tell. Maybe that was one thing she didn't know how to do. And yet, she continued to be one of the most genuinely cheerful people I've ever known, and not in an annoying or false way. Maybe that's because she knew that relationships are the most meaningful things we can have in this life, and she invested in that. All through the years, she kept up with everyone, not just her family, but the children and grandchildren of her many friends, too. She knew who was who, who was where, and who was doing what. Not in a gossipy way. She guarded other people's privacy as carefully as her own. She knew that being together isn't just fun, handy, and helpful, but being part of a community is what helped us get through the hard times in life. Over these last few years especially, she thrived because of the love and care and friendship she had with all of you, especially Betty, Michael and Anne, and many nieces and nephews. She loved counting the ever-growing number of grandchildren and grandchildren. She thrived because of the love and care she had from her kids, and she loved very much. Aunt Sue and Annie and Stephen, who took such good care of her over the years, especially from Nanny in these last few months when she was so ill. She was tickled by all of her grandchildren and great-grandchildren, whom she also loved. Being part of a community and loving and caring for each other. Maybe this sounds obvious or easy, but it's not. As humans, we make mistakes. We don't always get along. We don't always make great choices, especially when life gets hard, including Grandma. What's remarkable is that Grandma knew how to make us all feel loved anyway, that we matter, that whatever was going on would be okay. She was that reassuring force that reminded each of us that we are more than just the cat's mother. Even if she was mad at you, or didn't agree with you, or the choices you made, she still accepted you. She treated you with kindness and respect. She welcomed you and made space for you. It's amazing how much space there was for all of us, not just in that tiny cottage, but in her life. How much love there was to go around, it just expanded around her. This is the gift that she has given us all. This is the gift we gave her to, that got her through. Grandma thrived on it.
Let us pray. God of endless ages, from one generation to the next, you have been our refuge and our strength. Before the mountains were born or the earth came to be, you are God. Have mercy now on your servant, Marian. Give her a place in your kingdom where hope is firm for all who love and rest is sure for all who serve. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to the first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven all for, over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day, it will be said, indeed, this is our God. We looked at him and he saved us. This is the Lord to whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. O God, you are my God, for you I long. For you my soul is thirsting, my body pines for you like a dry, weary land without water. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. So I gaze on you in the sanctuary to see your strength and your glory. For your love is better than life. My lips will speak your praise. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. So I will bless you all my life. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. My mouth shall praise you with joy. My soul is thirsting for you. My bed I remember you, on you I muse through the night, for you have been my help. In the shadow of your wings I rejoice, my soul is thirsting for you. Good my
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. And where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Just want to begin by expressing, on behalf of our parish, condolences to all of you gathered here today, all of you who uh, will miss and grieve the loss of Marian in your lives. Um, but, you know, I, I found the words of remembrance very helpful today because the first reading, I was able to make a lot of connections because it says here in this vision of the prophet Isaiah, he has a vision at the fulfillment of time when this world has come to its fulfillment and, he, and Isaiah says, the Lord will provide for all peoples a huge banquet. And he is making the banquet. He's gathering the, I don't know, the, the food that will, and, and, and we, we don't have the whole full text here, but they describe the meal. That when they chew into this roast or leg of lamb or whatever they're eating, the grease pours down. 
Because you see, the people in those days didn't have that very often. It was rare to have meat. Usually they had hummus and pita bread and things like that. So to have roasted meat with the juices running down, that's what the Lord is preparing for all of us, it says, for all the peoples. No one is left out. No one is excluded. And I think if we see the image of the Lord preparing this meal, it, if, you have, if you have ever tried to prepare a Thanksgiving meal for a big family, you know the work involved. You know, making sure everything is cooked at the same time and getting the pl plates ready. And that's a lot of work. And this is what the Lord is doing for us. He's trying to provide hospitality to make us all feel welcome and loved. And is that not what that words of remembrance were about Marion in the cottage? How she welcomed all these people. And if there wasn't enough, she'd stretch the food out to make sure everybody had something. So it sounds like to me, she was a very godlike person. She did the same things that the Lord wants to do for all of us. Provide hospitality. Make sure everyone felt welcomed and loved and cared for. So we're all called to be like that. We're all called to be like God, who wants to make sure that we include everybody. I know we live in a world where a lot of people feel excluded and abandoned and re rejected, but that's not God's way. That has never been God's way. God welcomes every one of us, no matter who we are, no matter what we're like, no matter our differences and our um, ethnicities or whatever it is, God loves each of us as if there were only one of us. And it sounds like Marian shared many of those godlike qualities. That's what I heard this morning. The gospel today is even further, if you talk about hospitality, it says, Jesus says, my father has built a house. My father has created a home. And each one of us has a place in that home. And if it weren't true, I wouldn't have said that to you, but I sang it to you. And you know the way to get there. And it's Thomas who always has these important questions. And he says, but we don't know the way. I don't know how to get there. How am I going to get there? And he said, Jesus says, I'm the way. Follow me. Do what I encourage you to do. Be loving. That's the way. Be caring. That's the way. Look after your family and your friends and even those you don't know, the strangers and the refugees, look after them. That's the way. You know, live a kind life. Be merciful. Seek reconciliation. Build peace. That's the way that we get to that place where God has saved us. And even if we can't manage, for whatever reason, we can't manage to be loving and kind. And I don't know, there may be good reasons. People who feel extremely abandoned or rejected, they may not have that ability to be loving because they haven't felt that in their lives. But even there, God says, that's okay, come. We have a place for you too. So as we remember Marion, Let's remember her godlike qualities. We heard them this morning. You know, Krista, when she shared that, did you not see the comparison? Did you hear the comparison? I heard it immediately, that she was a godlike woman. And let us pray that we're all godlike. Let us all know the way, to, which leads to fulfillment, which helps us to be good people, which helps us to see a, a world where we turn it upside down, where we don't see war. You know, this is preoccupying our news these days and our hearts and our minds as we grieve the innocent lives being lost in Ukraine. There are 57 other world, uh, 57 other wars going on right now. The war in Syria has not ended. Afghanistan, there's drug wars in Mexico and Colombia and Bangladesh, Philippines. There's wars, civil wars going on in South Sudan and Ethiopia. All around the world, we're surrounded by conflict and division. 
And the way we escape that is by being godlike, by being loving, by being inclusive, and by sharing what we have with all we love, and even those we don't even know. So we remember Marianne for her godlike qualities. We ask the Lord to, to now welcome her into the place that he has ready for her. And in my, my mother was a native woman, so I'm very sensitive about reconciliation in the church. And in our way of belief is when we die, when Mar like Marion here, her spirit doesn't die. It continues to journey in this life and we go through the Western door. That's what we say. Her spirit now is going into the spirit world through the Western door. And what we can do for her is to pray that her journey continues to advance closer and closer to the creator. And at the same time, it's mutual. She's going to be praying for us. She's going to be doing the things that help us to live more godlike lives. Sisters and brothers, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church, confident that God hears our voices, and especially the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his, and we invite you for the prayer of the faithful. The response to each petition is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Marion received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our sister Marion was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her to the halls of heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Marion seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of all your people. Forgive the weaknesses of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Lord, make us servants of your peace. Where all is out, may we so make. 
my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Praise and glory for our commitment to the all. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant, Marian, may be taken up into glory with your Son. And this great mystery of love, we are all united. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned for those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks to him, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up. In a moment, suffer and keep the palace. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from me. For this is the chalice of my blood. you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, the church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, Pope, and Marcel, our bishop, and all people who minister in your name. Remember your servant Mary, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was
was united with your son and a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Let us pray especially for all those who have died from the coronavirus. Let us pray for all those who have died from this war in Ukraine. Welcome them all into the light of the face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Basil, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostle, peace I leave you, peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life.
I invite all of you to come forward, but maybe not all of you uh, will receive communion. If you do not wish to receive communion, just go and I'll give you a blessing. Oh, oh. 
Let us pray. Lord God, whose son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Marian may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Trusting in God, we have prayed together this morning for Marian. And now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness and parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Marian again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of God's kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. In baptism, Marian shared in the death and resurrection of Christ. May she be welcomed into the glory of eternal life. As a sign of respect for our sister Marian, we let this incense rise to God who has called her to share in his glory. May songs of the angels welcome smiles of the martyrs greet your own as darkness turns into day. Every fear will be undone and death will be no more. As songs of the angels Bring you home before the face of God. Every fear will be undone, and death will be no more. As songs of the angels bring you before the face of God. 
Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Marian in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you have bestowed upon Marian in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our common communion with all the saints in Christ. Merciful Father, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet and are with you and with our Marian forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, may every mark of affection and every gesture of friendship that you give to others be a sign of God's peace for you. And now let's take our sister Marian to her place of rest. We shall go out with hope of resurrection. We shall go out from strength to strength go on. We shall go So 